Good afternoon, everyone. It's been almost a week since Ontario safely entered step one of our roadmap to reopen. Across the province, Ontarians have been able to make the best of the sunny weather and safely resume many of the activities we all enjoy, whether that's shopping at local retailers, catching up with friends on a patio, or spending the weekend camping. A key component of our ability to do this stems from the ongoing success of Ontario's vaccine rollout, which has ensured that Ontarians have a strong level of protection against COVID-19 and variants. More than 75% of Ontario's adults have received their first dose and over 19%, over 2 million Ontarians are fully vaccinated. Thanks to the incredible efforts of Ontario's healthcare workers and public health units, we have also administered over 200,000 doses per day for the last two days. We have made tremendous progress and we are continuing to build on that success. With over 3 million doses of Moderna arriving in June, Ontario is continuing to accelerate our vaccine rollout by expanding eligibility for second doses ahead of schedule. As of Monday, June 21st at 8 a.m., Ontarians who receive their first dose of an mRNA vaccine on or before May 9th will be eligible to book their accelerated second dose appointment. That same week, on Wednesday, June 23rd, Individuals who receive their first dose of an mRNA vaccine on or before May 30th and who live in one of the now 10 identified Delta hotspots, being Durham, Halton, Hamilton, Porcupine, Simcoe Muskoka, Toronto, Waterloo, Wellington, Dufferin, Guelph, and York public health units will become eligible to book their second dose ahead of schedule. And beginning the week of June 28th, with dates and sequence to be confirmed, all Ontarians aged 18 and over who received their first dose of an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine will be eligible to book their second dose appointment. COVID-19 vaccines work and are our best defense against the virus and variants, including the Delta variant. Yesterday, for the first time since March 2020, the medical surgical, surgical intensive care unit at University Health Network's Toronto General Hospital did not have any COVID-19 patients. It was a very emotional time for them, as you can imagine. Vaccines work. They are safe and effective. They will help end the pandemic. And the best vaccine for your second dose is the vaccine that is available first. COVID-19 variants are still a concern and it's critical that everyone sign up to receive your second dose sooner when it's your turn. Together, we can stop the spread of the virus. Thank you. And now I'd like to hand it over to Solicitor General Jones. Thank you, Minister Elliott. From the early days of the launch of Ontario's vaccine distribution plan, our focus has been to get Ontarians vaccinated as effectively and efficiently as possible based upon vaccine supply. We've made significant progress with more than 75% of Ontarians having received their first dose and 18% now fully vaccinated. This is an incredible milestone and these numbers are increasing daily. As mentioned by Minister Elliott, we continue to make strides to speed up vaccines and get more people fully immunized earlier than originally targeted. The workplace and pop-up mobile clinics have been especially effective in our vaccine rollout and have helped reach workers with difficulty getting to vaccines. To date, we have held 15 large employer-led clinics, resulting in approximately 45,000 first doses and 30 mobile vaccine units, resulting in nearly 8,000 first doses. And now, second dose workplace and pop-up clinics are underway across multiple regions in Ontario. And second dose employer-led workplace clinics in Peel region are set to begin as early as next week. While this feels like a week of significant progress, and it is, we know the Delta variant remains a concern. That is why it is more important than ever for Ontarians to obtain their first and second doses. All vaccines provided as part of Ontario's vaccine rollout provide strong protection against COVID-19 and its variants, including the Delta variant. 
In addition, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization has confirmed that a mixed vaccine schedule is safe and effective. If you had Moderna or Pfizer for your first dose, you can safely take either Moderna or Pfizer for your second dose. Furthermore, with informed consent, individuals who received their first dose of AstraZeneca can now receive a second dose of any COVID vaccine at an accelerated interval of eight weeks. With every vaccine administered, we are making meaningful progress in our collective efforts to protect our loved ones and keep our community safe. In the meantime, it remains vital that we continue to follow public health and workplace safety measures currently in place. By doing so, we can continue to reduce transmission of COVID-19 and variants of concern, safeguard healthcare systems, and safe lives. Stay safe, and thank you. We'll go to the phone line for questions. As a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question, please. Your first question comes from Laura Stone from the Globe and Mail. Laura, please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my questions, or our questions. Um, I wanted to first ask about the the interchangeability of Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, Minister Jones, you just spoke about that. So could you just be clear to people who received Pfizer and Moderna uh, or Moderna, if they're booking their second shot now, there's a very good chance they'll receive one or the other now and they're, they're, they won't find out until they get to the clinic. Can you Can you expand on that and explain how that's going to work? So most pharmacies, mass vaccination clinics, and public health units that are hosting uh, the clinics will notify people and inform uh, what they will receive when they plan to get there. But I want to reinforce how important it is that the first um, opportunity for you to receive your, your second dose, take it. Moderna and Pfizer are both messenger RNA vaccines. They are interchangeable and the efficacy is within data points. So please, as you get that opportunity to get your second dose, you will know what you are receiving, but take it because it will protect you and your loved ones. Thank you. Follow up. Can you address um, some of the hesitancy that, uh, that, that's coming out regarding people who receive Pfizer and who don't want to take Moderna, they want to stick with the the brand that they, they first had. Uh, how are you going to, to address and, and combat this um, if some people are, are going to refuse to take uh, Moderna, which Ontario is now receiving a significant amount of? We will continue to communicate um, the strong message that the clin clinical table, that the advice from NASI, that Health Canada has said, which is messenger RNAs are completely interchangeable. I understand that people initially felt that if they had Pfizer at their first shot, they, they believed they needed uh, Pfizer for the second. It's simply not proven to be the case through science. And I would urge people who have concerns, have those conversations with your medical practitioner, with your pharmacy, because the science says messenger RNAs all of these vaccines are interchangeable. And the really critical piece that we need to do right now is as soon as you are available to do so, please book and get your second vaccine. Thank you. Next question. Your next question comes from Randy Rath from CHCH TV. Randy, please go ahead. Hi, ministers. Um, we're hearing reports out of America that um, certain things like um, the Bruce Springsteen uh, Broadway show will only allow people in that have been given a vaccine that is approved by the FDA. Um, that excludes people who have had AstraZeneca. And, it, you know, we don't know what they're going to demand to cross the border when the border's open. What do you say to people that have been um, double-dosed with uh, uh, with AstraZeneca, are, are, are they just going to be out of luck to, to, to attend some of these things? So the first thing I will say for those individuals who've been double-dosed with AstraZeneca is thank you, you are well protected and you are protecting your friends and family. In terms of the reopening of the border, Premier Ford is working uh, this week with uh, 
federal, provincial, and territorial leaders to make sure that we have a consistent approach in how uh, we reopen the border safely. And that will include uh, the uh, discussions about which vaccines, uh, whether they have to be one dose, two dose, uh, will continue. But those conversations are in um, happening as we speak, and we will make sure that individuals in Ontario and Canada who received a Health Canada NACI approved AstraZeneca will have the same rights as individuals who received other vaccines. Thank you. Follow up. Hey, well, if that doesn't work out, um, can people that have been uh, immunized with AstraZeneca go back and, and, and start over and, and, and get in? one of the other vaccines, is that, um, is that, are people able to do that? Is that, uh, is that, is that going to be safe? So at this point, uh, once you have received your first and second dose of whatever COVID vaccine you have received, you have the efficacy, the protection that ensures that you uh, are protected from serious illness or um, worse consequences as a result of of contracting COVID-19. I would not, and I will leave it to um, the clinical advice, uh, encourage or suggest that anyone should be receiving anything more than the first and second doses that have currently being offered in Ontario. Next question. Your next question comes from Nicole Lampa from CTV News Kitchener. Nicole, please go ahead. Good afternoon, ministers. Thank you for taking my questions. Um, our local medical officer of health signaled Waterloo Region may not enter step two uh, because of our local COVID trends. Even step one is at risk if things don't improve. What discussions have you had about this with our local officials and what actions are you recommending? Yes, thank you for the question. So again, Premier Ford and myself have had uh, multiple conversations with uh, Chair Karen Redmond on this very issue. Um, Ministry of Health and the Vaccine uh, Task Force has in fact almost doubled the number of vaccines that are available to Waterloo Region because we understand it uh, is in need of additional doses as well as uh, offers and agreement to provide mobile vaccine clinics. Look, with the 10 public health units that have a higher rate of uh, the Delta variant, we are putting all of our resources and efforts to make sure that what the public health units need, they get. Waterloo in particular did ask for some additional health human resources, which we have gladly provided, uh, as well, of course, um, through additional doses that they themselves, through their public health clinics, are going to be providing. And we will continue that work because we want to make sure that where the Delta variant is right now does not have an opportunity to spread further throughout Ontario. Thank you. Follow up. You know, a key component of the Delta variant being widespread here in Waterloo Region is our vaccination rates. We are below the provincial numbers with only 13% of our residents currently fully vaccinated versus the 19% provincially. Give us a hard date when you want Waterloo Region to be on par with the rest of the province and what else are you doing to ensure that happens? So one of the determinations that we make uh, at the vaccine task force um, level is to ensure if a public health unit is below uh, the provincial average that we offer and give them additional supplies. I will say specifically re related to Waterloo, uh, uh, the number that you want to look at is how many people have received the first dose because even one dose gives you very good protection against all variants including the Delta variant. So we'll continue to work with Waterloo and other public health units who uh, need additional assistance from the province but the, the key here is that we want to make sure everyone receives at least their first dose to protect themselves of, uh, from the variants. Next question. Your next question comes from Lorinda Redekop. Please go ahead. Hi there, ministers. Now that we have so many Ontarians who are fully vaccinated, 
Uh, why has the province not released specific guidance about what it is safe for them to do or not do? Will you be doing this? A lot of people, who, um, including a lot of seniors, who want to be able to do more. Well, yes, we will be releasing guidance very shortly because I know that uh, people are wondering if they've had both vaccines, uh, should they be able to go about their, their usual business, do they need to wear a mask and so on. So we are uh, going to be releasing guidelines for each of the three steps about what people should uh, continue to do uh, because I know that people want to uh, follow the rules, keep everybody else safe as well. So we will be releasing that very shortly. Follow up. Uh, what will you be doing uh, going ahead for this next week when so many more people become eligible for this at a dose two? What will you do to ensure that we don't have that same problem with the online booking system that we saw this past Monday where people were going online right at 8 a.m. and then there weren't any appointments available in uh, their health unit. If they did find one, it was very far away and then it was you know, people were checking every day, going back to see if appointments had opened up. Well, first I would say that we are very fortunate to uh, be in the situation where so many people want to book their vaccines first or second doses because that's not happening in other jurisdictions. And so we're, we're very fortunate in Ontario and I thank the people of Ontario for coming forward to, to be vaccinated. But we are uh, working with the local public health units who are the ones that are usually responsible for having the appointments available in uh, whatever method it is, if it's max, uh, that large vaccination clinics, uh, public health pop-up clinics or whatever it happens to be. So we are working with them right now to make sure that as eligibility opens up more next week that there are appointment spots available so that people don't have to wait, they don't have to come back and search many times to find that appointment. Next question and this will be our final reporter. Your final question comes from Christina Succi from CTV News Ottawa. Christina, please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question, Minister. In Ottawa, we've been hearing all week, actually, for the last couple of weeks about that we've heard from various city officials, there's no vaccine supply here to keep up with the province's moves to continue to expand eligibility. Uh, Ottawa pharmacists right now telling us as well they can't keep up with the demand right now with the current groups eligible. So with Ottawa saying this, and, and we're expecting to open up eligibility once again on Monday, Without additional vaccines, the city says there's not going to be any appointments left for people here in Ottawa come Monday. So how is this going to work well, then? Have you spoken to the city or does the province have a plan to manage uh, this particular situation in the capital? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, Premier Ford and I had a, a very valuable conversation with Mayor Watson earlier this week, uh, reinforced that when public health units, regardless of where they are in the province of Ontario, um, deplete their inventory of supply, the, they have a commitment and a guarantee that the province of Ontario will make sure that they get sufficient supply going forward. I, I will say that we have made it very clear in our weekly meetings, um, Minister Elliott and I, with public health units, that they must use the supply that they have. The last thing we want right now, with the Delta variant staring us in the face, is inventory in freezers. So we have reassured uh, Mayor Watson and the City of Ottawa that as they um, go through and, and release their uh, doses, we will make sure that they have sufficient supply. Uh, so Sunday, uh, there was quite a supply uh, left in uh, the Ottawa PHU, just over 23,000, which they do not go through in a day. So reassure uh, public health units and Mayor Watson that we will give them supply when we need it, but we want it to be used very quickly. We don't want to have multiple uh, weeks or days sitting in freezers while other public health units have none. And the other piece I would add to that is because of the large influx of Moderna, the largest that Ontario has ever seen, uh, there will be more supply coming in through our pharmacy channels as well. So historically where you saw pharmacies run out very quickly when they were receiving their weekly supply, you're now going to be able to see a more consistent flow 
because we have the supply coming from the federal government. Thank you. Final follow-up? Sure. Uh, thanks for that answer, Solicitor Jones. Um, on that note, though, so I guess technically how I understood that is then you're saying that this is actually the responsibility of the city of Ottawa because they're keeping all their doses in freezers and not using them properly or not using them fast enough. I know that Watson did say they were keeping all those doses in the freezer as a way to avoid mass cancellation of appointments like we've seen in the past for Ottawa. But is your message today to the city use those vaccines that are sitting in the freezer then? Yes, and, and we've made that very clear on our weekly meetings uh, with the public health units. Uh, Minister Elliott and I meet uh, twice a week with the public health units and the message of please use what you have. We have now confidence that we're getting um, some, some larger supplies coming from the federal government, particularly as it relates to Moderna. As I said, we've never had this quantity of Moderna fight uh, vaccines coming to Ontario. So we want to make sure that it gets in people's arms um, and make sure that as, the, as they receive their weekly allotments, because they do come in seven-day increments, uh, they have a plan that maps out using um, basically all of that weekly allotment in those seven days. And that message was very clearly uh, shared with Mayor Watson. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.